Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and in this RPG Maker Envy tutorial, I had a special request to make a very simple cooking crafting system. So let's get to it. I'll show you uh, what we're going to be making first, and then I'll show you how to make it. So, we have some options here. We went to a campfire and activated our simple cooking system, and we have some items that we can make. Roasted rat. Let's try to make it. It takes one rat meat to make. Continue. Oh, we don't have any rat meat. What if we say this? Oh, five bat wings to make that? We don't have any bat wings. What about this broiled bird? It takes two bird breasts and a salt. Continue. We don't have any salt. We also don't have any items at all. So let's open this chest, get our items, and let's see what we can make. Rat meat. Alright, cook the rat meat, <clears throat> then made a roasted rat. Sounds good. Takes five bat wings. We've cooked the five bat wings and we made a bat kebab. Delicious. Broiled bird. Two bird breasts and the salt continue. Yeah, let's make it. We cooked the two bird breasts and uh, added a bit of salt to that. We made a broiled bird. Let's look at these items. Got our roasted rat here. Delicious. Adds 25% experience and plus 10 max HP gained in the next battle. So this one's going to last just for one battle and then at the end of the battle it's going to disappear but this bat kebab yum this item is going to give you 50 percent experience and plus 25 percent agility and it lasts for 50 combat rounds and this boiled broiled bird gives 50 percent experience 30 percent attack and 30 percent defense and it also lasts 50 combat rounds so some cool but let's see if we eat more than one will it let us yeah because they're all in their own state so you can have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, have a feast, and be prepared for battle. So let's go battle. Alright. Take this thing down. We're just gonna do this one battle so I can get my dragon. Oops. My dragon a bit. So we should still have two of the three buffs because two of them is gonna last for 50, for 50 rounds. But we should uh, have one that disappeared. There we go. We have two buffs left because the the roasted uh, roasted rat was only for the first battle. So you can have different uh, conditions on your your uh, your buff items. So let me show you how I made that system. Before we go into the event itself, you're gonna have to create a few items. So we're gonna make our crafting items. We're going to make a rat meat crafting item, so basically you're going to give it a name, a description, say that it's using cooking, we're going to make it a regular item, price is up to you. This is not consumable because it's going to be a raw material. The scope is none, the occasion is never, and everything else is bland and, and default. Uh, the same thing is going to apply for the, the bat wing, which I have up here in item 75. Uh, same thing will apply for salt and the same thing will apply for the bird breast. Now you can just copy paste one, change the graphic, and change the name. So that's how you can make uh, most of your raw materials very quickly. Design one and copy paste to rename. Uh, for the other items, we've specified that the roasted rat meat's gonna last <clears throat> for um, the next battle. So we give a description saying what we want it to do, and uh, this time we're gonna make it the scope of one ally, occasion always, consumable on this one, and we're gonna add a state. So we have to go to our states tab and create those states. So we're going to make a state for each of the food buff effects. For the roasted rat that lasts one round, we're going to just check remove at the end of battle and no auto removal timing. And we give it a special parameter of experience, which you can find right in here. Oh, no, sorry, special parameter right here, experience. And if we wanted to give it 25% bonus, we would say 125% because it's a multiplication thing. 
for uh, HP, you just go to your parameters at the top, max HP, and multiply that by 110%. So that's it for the Roasted Rat. <clears throat> the Back to Bob, similar, except we're not checking remove at the end of battle. We're setting auto removal timing to turn in, and we're setting the number of turns we want to last for. And then we're doing the same thing for here, except selecting different uh, uh, parameters on that one. And this one is basically the same thing as the last Bat Kebab. Duration number of turns on in turn. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we're giving it three effects, and they're much better effects. So this item took uh, three things to, to create in two separate items. So this one would be the strongest of the three, I would, uh, I would assume. So we've got our states that we've created. Now on our items, we're going to uh, add a state by going to edit, other, common event, and selecting, or no, sorry, not common event. We're going to go to state, add state, and uh, the, one of the three states that we added uh, for that particular one. So roasted rat, we'll add the roasted rat state, and so forth. So we've got our raw materials created, we've got our uh, finished products created, and we've got our states created. So now let's look at that event. So you're going to make a simple event. I've just chosen to put a campfire down on the map and then put a fire, a flame uh, effect above it. And I've set direction fix so when you talk to it, it doesn't disappear. And I've set it on the stepping animation with the speed of 2x and frequency higher. That way it looks animated when you're, uh, when you're on the screen or even if you're talking to it, it doesn't change. So with the trigger is going to be action effect and priority is priority same as uh, character so you can't walk through it or over it <clears throat> or of course not under it. So the first thing you're going to do is inform the player that this is a, a crafting system or, or uh, you can bypass the simple cooking system and just say what would you like to cook or whatever you want. Matter of fact, you can bypass the whole text and you can start with a show choice. So we did a, a show choice and you may be wondering what this means slash II uh, with brackets. Well, if you remember when we were looking at the menu at the beginning, we didn't actually see just text. We saw icons, the pictures of the item. So if you want to uh, show uh, a picture in your uh, icons, you're going to include a plugin, Yenfly Core Engine, and the message core, the Yet message core. So I'll put a link to Yenfly's website in the link below, in the description below, <clears throat> and you can get those plugins. They're really awesome because the, you go to the help file, you can see all kinds of different things that you can do with your text. And in these commands, uh, show, uh, also. In these, within these commands, you find uh, things like this that writes out the item's name, including the icon. So the only work that you have to do is figure out which icon, what number is the icon you want. So in your database, I'm going to see uh, backslash, uh, no, that is a forward slash, um, ii, and uh, 175 in brackets. And that's going to call on this item, and it's going to show this graphic, and then that name right after the graphic pretty neat. It adds a little bit of, uh, uh, I don't know, depth or flavor to the, instead of just random text. You saw how it looks. This one looked a little funny compared to these ones with pictures. Um, so this would be our roasted rat. This would be our, uh, what was it, uh, bat kebab. And this is our uh, broiled bird. And then so we're going to basically put uh, the options that the final products in here. And then we're, or we're going to give a, a, a cancel one default to the council one so the player doesn't automatically start uh, try to start crafting an item when they spam an enter button or okay button and we're going to default to our cancel and uh, that's uh, that one's our cancel in this case so after they've showed choices uh, underneath it each choice you're going to create a little flavor text that says this item will create and then once again insert that insert that and then uh, uh, actually this item takes you're going to uh, inform the player of what the item requires because they want to make this item but they don't know uh, what it takes and uh, maybe they don't want to use that item because it's also used for something else in the game so you let the player know that we're going to use one of these items to make this the item that you saw on the list so they have an option you're going to show choices again and when they say yes <clears throat> you're going to do a check for items so if, if it's going to be uh, if it's going to be one item then you can do a simple uh, conditional statement that says uh, on tab 4 item you can check for if they have at least one of those items and then if they do you know, you're also going to include an else handler for this conditional statement so when they don't you tell the player you don't have enough and then you put in 
the, the raw material that they would be required to have. Uh, and if they say yes, then you go on to the next thing of you remove that item. So that's a simple change item. Um, page one, change items, and you go decrease by the number. And then you're going to show, this is flavor, you can do this optional if you want to look flashy. In my case, I've chosen a slash animation, <clears throat> and then I've waited 15 frames. Then I've showed a fire animation, waiting, waiting 15 frames, and then a crafting, like, tink animation. And then after that, I've awarded the item, and then I've informed the player, uh, awarding the item the same as the change items, except it's a positive instead of a negative. And then I've informed the player with a text... Uh, saying that we've used one of these materials and we've made one of these materials using the same uh, slash ii uh, thing to show the pictures because who doesn't like seeing pictures in the text? I think it looks better. Um, moving on to the next option, this one's a little bit different because now we have to have five of an item. So using the last command doesn't work if you just go conditional branch uh, check if they have this item because what if they only have one? Then, and it takes five, well, they'll be able to make it even if they only have one. <clears throat> so what we have to do is we're going to have to control variables. So you're going to set a variable for any item that you're going to check for that's more than one. So you control variables, you select a new variable, in this case it's uh, bird, wing, bird wing count, and uh, we're saying set to the game data of the item bird, uh, bat wing, so, yeah, not bird wing, bat wing wherever it's at, um, bat wing, and now it's going to count how many is in that is in the possession of the party, how many do you have in your inventory, and it's going to set that variable to that many, so this bat wing count is going to be equal to the number of bat wings, so that's the first thing we do, and then we're going to make a conditional statement underneath that saying, if this uh, variable, sorry not switches, if this variable yeah, bat wing count is greater than or equal to the number we want them to, to, to use, in this case 5, then do this. We're also going to check create else handler right here. So after, um, uh, it, on the else handler, you, if they don't have enough, you inform them that they don't have enough of whatever particular item. Um, then you're going to, uh, so we already did that, okay. So we're going to, if they have enough, then it's going to do everything in here. It's going to take the items, show the animations, award the kebab, and inform the player that they've got this. So we've consumed five of these raw materials and made this final product. Now this next one is a little bit different as well, because it's good, we're going to require multiple items. So you're going to take the first two methods that you learned, and you're going to combine them. You're going to start off with, if they, the player has, uh, with, it's going to be nested conditional branches. So you're going to start off by using the, the, one, the, the things that require one item or less. And we're going to say if the player has uh, one salt, do this. Otherwise, create an else handler. And on that else handler, you're going to say you don't have enough salt. Play more StarCraft 2 or League of Legends. <laughs> um, and then uh, if they do, inside that, you're going to control variable and do the same thing we did for the first one, except this time we're going to set the number to bird breast count. <clears throat> and then uh, if they have more than greater than or equal to, uh, after this control variable, you're going to make a conditional statement. And if they have more than two, then it's going to consume all of those items. So change item salt minus one, bird breast minus two, show the animations, uh, show the, the, inform the player that they've got an item. Uh, we've cooked the two bird breasts and added a, a touch, a pinch of salt. I kind of like that better. A pinch of salt, not a pinch. A pinch of salt and we made a final product. And then we're going to award that uh, royal bird. Otherwise, you don't have enough royal birds. And that's basically it for the event. That's the, all there is to it. And you can award those uh, items with a treasure chest, or you can put those items in uh, enemy drops by putting them right here, saying this thing can drop. Well, you would probably want a bat to drop the bat when you try it to make it more logical. But you guys get the idea. Um, this was a, a sort of a simple tutorial, but um, no matter how simple it may seem, if you need help with something, ask me in the comments below, and I will do my best to help you. Thank you guys for watching. Continue to like, favorite, share, subscribe this stuff if you want more content, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.